You're now tuned in to the Lady Charmaine Live Show, and I'm your host, Lady Charmaine. And as always, I got another great interview for you today. And I'll tell you who it is coming up right after this. guest today is a singer and an actress. She is a member of the famous gospel singing family, the Winans, and the daughter of Carvin Winans. And she's here today to talk about the final season of Owns Greenleaf and her role as Charity Greenleaf. Help me welcome to the Lady Charmaine Live show, Miss Deborah Joy Winans. Welcome to the show. <laughs> What's up, Lady Charmaine? No, and not having me. Good. And my Winnie Williams voice, how you do it? How are you? And no, first of all, how are you COVID? How are you COVID? And how are you getting Look, through all of this? Eating. <laughs> eating. Uh, I, I got my Corona 2020 on too. So I'm trying to get my right. stuff on too. <laughs> Literally, girl, I'm exactly. doing jump rope challenges. I'm doing ab challenges. I'm trying to Everything. get it all. <laughs> Food is so good. And that's a shame. It's, it's so good. good. And it brings you together. I and, love eating with my, my husband. It's yeah. Just, just, we we're greedy. Yeah, I, I, uh, you know, I, I feel learned you. to bake, and mm. we just we've been eating. Yeah, yeah. I, it's very good, good and comforting. Good and comforting. <laughs> Now, your brother and his wife was just on my show. I love your brother Juan and Lisa. They were just on. Yeah. Yeah. So I love are them. They, <laughs> they are a beautiful singing couple. So now he even said a little something about you on my show. I said, Ooh, I'm going to tell him. <laughs> I said, what I'm going to tell. <laughs> like, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to get the clip because I'm trying to remember because I, I told him, I said, I'm going to play this clip and your sister come on my show one day <laughs> and I'm going to tell on you <laughs> that you said that. Because we were good. I'm going to get them real good. Yeah. Because we were talking about how. Uh, you both played your aunt and uncle BB and Cece. What was that experience like for you to play your real life relatives? Oh my goodness. It was a dream that I didn't even know I had. It was mm. amazing. Um, acting has always been my love and my passion. It's, I've never wanted to sing, but to be able to perform on a stage with my brother mm -hmm. And we are playing these people that we love and hold so dearly was right. just, it was magical. Wow. It was quite incredible. Because I love your Auntie Cece. She has such just a beautiful, sweet spirit. I'm like, is she like that in real life? Mm. Is she that sweet? Absolutely. <laughs> She's like the one person that I can say everything you think about her when you see her on the stage is exactly who she is. Oh, how sweet. She's amazing. And, and, what, and what a great privilege. And see, I've also had your uncle, Pastor Marvin Winans. So and like I tell him, he can sing the phone book and make it sound good. Make look, it go into the look, spirit and be like, ABCs, oh, Jesus. All right. The ABC. <laughs> you know what I'm it'll saying? Bless your whole soul. Yeah. And they look, look, bless your soul, bless your heart, all that good old stuff. <laughs> Also, um, you also did uh, voiceovers like for different, you were on The Sound. You also were on Kelly Price's yeah. audio book. What book was mm -hmm. that? What book was that? Oh, now, Lady Charmaine, you really taking me back. Um, I actually don't. Re I think it's her like memoir. Um, but I was a super child child. Mm. Uh, I think I had just graduated from uh, CalArts with my master's in acting. I cannot remember the name of her book, but I think it was her own like memoir. And um, yeah, that was quite a feat. That was wow. three days in the studio of just reading. Wow. I had never done that before. And I'm not sure if it's what God has for me again mm. in the future. <laughs> like Jesus. But uh, it was it was a learning experience. It was it was great. It was great. Now you are an actress. You come from a, from a family of singers. I mean, from like your uncles and you got a Mario Winans and, you know, just of course, all of you. And your passion was acting. Where did your passion mm -hmm. come from? Uh, you know, honestly, I think it's just uh, growing up. My parents on the weekends used to take us to double feature movies every yes. weekend. Yeah. And um, I would just look at the screen and decide, oh, I, I can do that. It was just a burning passion from all of those times. And um, I guess it shocked my parents because when I did 
get older and graduate from high school, uh, I was going to college and I told them I was going to major in theater. And they were like, what? Say what now? <laughs> um, and I just said, no, it's, I, I love it. I really believe it. And they came to see my first show at Wayne State and they were floored. They fully supported me from then on. They just said, this is absolutely what you do. And, um, and they've been there for me, but it's since I was a kid, it's just a love that I had every time we watched a movie. And it's not like I saw a bunch of us in the movies, you know, leading, but I just felt like this is what I can do. It was just, just that calling and you played your auntie uh, as well. And so what was it like? Okay, you had this passion, you had this calling. Then you got on the stage and able to play her. What else did that fuel in you? Did you see yourself on the big screen, small screen? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I've, that's what I've, I've seen myself in every space. Um, no, that's right. From, from theater to TV to film. I, I just feel like that's the vision that God has given me for my mm -hmm. life. Um, and I felt like I had to do the work. I had to train. I right. knew I had a gift uh, to do this, but everyone, you know, has gifts. It's up to you to work it and make it everything that it's supposed to be. Right. And so um, I saw myself in all of it, even with my BFA and then my MFA, I got out of school with my master's and still took more acting classes because I wanted to have more in-depth experience when it came to TV and film. Wow. Be because theater was something that I felt really, really great at. But TV and film, they're all nuanced and very mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. That's um, true. And so I just had to keep working it. But I've seen myself in every space and for the Lord to have blessed me in these spaces has been incredible. He's opened door after door after door in ways that you can only attribute right, to, to him. Yep, <laughs> that is so true. Now your, your character, Charity Greenleaf, you know, you know she get on my nerves, like I'm sure she get on everybody else's. So how did you land the role as Charity Greenleaf on this great show, Greenleaf? Uh, Charity is, she's a feisty one. <laughs> yes, um, she is. <laughs> so Charity, I was doing a workshop of my uncle's musical, Born for This, the B.B. Mm -hmm. Winans story, um, in New York. It was in March 2015, and that was the last workshop we were doing before the productions that we knew we had happening that next year. Mm -hmm. um, and Oprah came to that workshop. Oprah, Gail, Cicely Tyson. It was insane. It was a workshop in, like, this little rehearsal room in New York. It mm -hmm. was nothing special. We were standing up with music uh, stands like 10 feet from Oprah <laughs> doing this show that we have not memorized. We're just sort of going, doing like it's a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, that was very nerve wracking, but amazing. But that's how she saw me. Mm. And two months later, she called my uncle and um, told him to have me email her my headshot and my resume. And when he called hmm. me to tell me that, I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. And, um, and then she responded. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Oprah like every responded. Step of the way, I was just like, is this really Oprah? Is she what is happening? <laughs> And she um, she asked me for my phone number. Mm. I gave it to her clearly, and um, and then she called me and she was telling me how she had the script and she could not get me out of her mind for this particular role. Um, and she mentioned me to her network, mm. and unfortunately, nobody knew who I was. I said, "Well, they wouldn't. I haven't done anything yet." And she said, "That's okay." I think that they'll see what I see when it's time for you to audition. Mm. And I'm going to get people and I'm going to open the door for you as you possibly can. So when it's time for you to audition, you do what you do. And I just was like, wow, okay, Oprah. Wow. Okay, <laughs> and thank you. Because I didn't have an agent. I didn't have, I didn't have a manager. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so essentially she's the one that submitted me and, and, you know, had them see me for an audition and the rest is history. Um, I just, and I, I, she, when she comes around, she makes you feel so loved and it's easy to become very familiar because mm -hmm. she's, she's, she's so down to earth. Mm -hmm. um, but I never want to forget the jewel that she is, what she's done just for, for our communities and, and around the world. But, but for me, she was a huge stepping stone into my destiny. Right. And I will always honor her for that. And any time to her, she says, I know that it was God that put you on my heart and in my mind for this particular role. And I just said, well, God, I didn't know you were going to use Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> but I thank you. Right. <laughs> the big O. Thank you, God. Right. <laughs> That's a blessing. So what can we expect to see this season? Now, thank God for own and thank y'all for sending me the first four episodes. I got a chance to see all the little juiciness in the first four episodes. But what can Ooh. the audience? Yes. So, yeah, Ain't you know, that's a treat, honey. It's a treat. So, <laughs> <laughs> so for those who don't know, what can they expect Ooh. to see? <laughs> you can expect to see a whirlwind. Um and I, I will only speak for charity. Mm -hmm. I think that you will see this young woman who has grown up, who has made some mistakes, but she's also been through so much. And all of it, all mm -hmm. of that together has made her who she is in this final season. And uh, you will see her take responsibility, mm -hmm. but you will also see her not be a pushover. She's not going to be held hostage to her past mistakes. It's like, okay, look, I recognize that, but what are we doing now? Right. How are we going to move forward? Right. Because I'm not just the same way that none of, none of them will be held hostage to all of the poor mistakes that they made. Um, so Charity will not be held hostage to her past mistakes. She recognizes what she's done. Um, she is really, she's betrayed her family and she's caused them a very deep pain. Mm -hmm. um, she was also betrayed. And she's in pain, but she's going to figure out, okay, I've got leeway here with the family. I'm going to let y'all talk about me a little bit, <laughs> but now we're going to get it together. Correct. Because the same way that Charity has made mistakes, they have made mistakes. Correct. Um, and they've had to come back and humble themselves and get back to the word and get back to their foundation of faith and get back to who God has called them to be. Um, so just because you're doing well doesn't mean you didn't have a hard road getting there. Right. You know what I mean? Correct. And I think it's, it's so interesting to me that people have so much to say about charity when it's like, do y'all know Lady May and the things that she's done? Mm -hmm. Do you like, we are literally meeting Grace's son for the first time right. that she's ignored for 25 years. Um, so, you know, to act as if charity is just this complete rebel that has just done nothing but torment the family is just not the case. Um, and so this season, you're going to see her in the midst of the pain that she has caused standing up for herself mm. and finding the right way to go about things and not allowing anybody to make her feel bad or to push her over. Mm -hmm. She is standing up. Ooh, baby, she is standing up and I love it. She gets so feisty <laughs> and I think it's amazing. And I can't, I can't wait to see the Reverend. <laughs> I cannot wait to see the, I can't yes. wait to see the Reverend and what she gonna do yes. this season. Okay, so exactly. you, you all had this brilliant song with Tremaine Hawkins going up yonder. Whose idea was that to implement the entire cast and it turned out Yo. beautifully. Yes. How, who, whose idea was that? Whose brainchild? I literally have no idea whose brainchild mm. it is. I know that Lionsgate reached out and said that they were, we had already heard um, what Tremaine had done because they redid her song mm -hmm. for the show. Just like they've been using it under the trailers, you know, mm -hmm. when it was, when we were approaching the premiere. Okay. I was like, oh my God, that's Tremaine Hawkins. That's, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. That's going to be under. That's, right. that's the gospel staple. Mm -hmm. But they redid the music and it was so cool. And then Lionsgate reached out and said that they wanted to do this virtual choir. 
and would I be a part of it? And I was like, of course. And then they told me, Tremaine, Erica Campbell. I was like, <laughs> um, some of like the, the greatest gospel singers ever. Uh -huh, okay. Uh -huh. uh, that's a very easy yes. And then they told me that um, Keith would be a part of it, which is so great. Mm -hmm. Keith walks around singing on set all day, every day. You can hear him like a mile away. And it's like, oh, Keith is here. He'll be singing songs in French, Italian. He's just, he's, he is mm. that guy. Um, and so to know that he was going to be a part of it was really, really great. And then, of course, Merle, because, you know, she's sung on Broadway for years. Oh, okay. um, so that was really, really a cool collaboration that I was excited uh, that they asked me to be part of. And it, see, I've interviewed Keith before, and I didn't realize he can sing. And I was like, oh, now is he pretending or is he really singing? Oh no, that man can sing. Oh, oh yeah, I see. He oh. does a show, um, uh, uh, a Nat King Cole show. Oh really? Ooh, that thing is good. <laughs> He's amazing. Well, look, I got to try to see if he on YouTube so I can check that out. So when you are not busy, when you are not filming, what can we catch Deborah Joy doing? Um, playing games. Uh, I love my family, so I love family time. Um, mm -hmm. I catching up on shows, i.e., this pandemic, I caught up on everything and then some. <laughs> um, and also for me, uh, during this time was sort of a an awakening um, to everything that African Americans have endured in this country, mm -hmm. and um, just finding a way to bring about some change has been my goal um, since I've sort of um, a really awakened to everything happening. Um, and so I did some music um, that I just felt was timely for what's going on. Um, and so I've been working on that and, um, and just finding other ways to serve. Um, if there's a protest to go to, if there is, um, you know, a meeting, a Black Lives Matter you know, meeting just to understand what they're doing and how I can be a part of serving or changing. There's something that I can do. Um, and I tell people, if you have breath in your body, there is something you can do to affect change in this world right now. And you just got to find out what it is. You don't have to be a frontline protester. Um, you don't have to be the biggest donator. Um, but there's some way you can can serve right. there is some way you can serve and 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 god has called us to have equality and justice and so you know i pray that people really find a way to get on not just the right side of history but to get on god's side um we are called to be a voice to the voiceless and help for the helpless and it's time that we do what we're supposed to do mm -hmm. especially Absolutely. as people of god Absolutely. So when COVID is finally over and we are free and we are broken out of jail, what is that one thing that you look forward to doing? Oh, snap. It's not just one thing. Oh, my gosh. I want to travel. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to travel. I want to hit a beach. I want to be in the sun. <laughs> um, I want to eat at some of my favorite restaurants. They've been closed the whole time. It's so hard. <laughs> so I want to eat. Um, I want to work out. I just, I want to be with people. Right. I want to be with people. We were not created to just be alone. And mm -hmm. I, I want to be with people. I want right. to share the love. Right, right, right. You know, you didn't really realize, well, I know I didn't, I didn't really realize how much I missed people and just being around and, and laughing or what I took for granted until it wasn't there anymore. Absolutely. Just, it's the, you don't think about it. Right, right. I mean, it's my daughter. It's so funny because I am usually the one that's like, oh, Okay, yeah, no, I can't make it today, but I'll see you guys another day. Mm -hmm. Look, that will not happen. For so I'm making everything. Next year when we get out, <laughs> invite me everywhere. I'm, I'm there on the calendar. Oh, I'm there too. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. I don't even need to check. I'm just there. Send me out I'm all there. the information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, also, yeah. there you go. And also, here it is. What is one thing that someone would be surprised to learn about you? Mm. 
surprised to learn about me? Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, well, I'm from Detroit. Mm -hmm. I, I don't play. OK. Uh, I, I don't play when it comes to, you know, my family. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, the Lord is working on me, but <laughs> I, I still have a quick I got a quick mouth and I got some hands mm. that I have to give to him. Oh, you got some daily. hands. You, you got some hands. You know, you, you got to some... you got to give it to the Lord daily so he can keep working hands. things out of you. <laughs> but let me tell you something. <laughs> What we don't play with is family. <laughs> All right. I know that's okay. right. He's still perfecting those things that concern you. That's what the yeah, scriptures absolutely. say. <laughs> that's what the scriptures say. <laughs> working on me. Okay? I'm a work in progress. Okay. Absolutely. Work in progress. Well, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. And I want to remind the audience to make sure that you guys tune into the fifth and final season of Greenleaf airing on Tuesday nights on OWN. Make sure you catch my girl, Miss Deborah Joy. She playing that old charity Greenleaf child, but it is good. How about... Reverend Charity Greenleaf. <laughs> yes, AP, AP. She is the AP now. Okay. She little, little, okay. She is that girl. And again, thank you so much, Deborah. <laughs> and I look forward you. to having thank you back you on the show. Me, Lady Charmaine. Absolutely. Thank you.